Shalom, first and foremost, I'd like to give all praise to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushai, Ba'ashem Rakakadash, double honors to the elders and apostles, the great millstone who are teaching this truth in sincerity, and a shout out to Yachim that's out there in the four quarters of the earth proclaiming this truth. Raka the Yahweh, Raka the Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rakakadash, Brakatan. So, as you know, in this shit show, <laughs> UK is locked down and. Uh, who are making the most out of this? Well, you see Fuck Gates right there, who's really a Rothschild, you know, and you see these others there, because of course it's all about the Great Reset, as Dabu7 explains. Once again, talking about the Great Reset. The Great Reset that some wanted to call conspiracy, all because of the name. But little did they know what they wanted to call conspiracy it was very real. You can go over to the World Economic Forum that was created by this man, billionaire Klaus Schwab, and you can see that this plan is very real. This is one that they unveiled to the whole world back in May via Britain's Prince Charles. He did so at the World Economic Forum. All these guys are teammates and buddies that are pushing a plan that has the motto of Build Back Better. Any leader that you see pushing this has sold their people out. Hmm. Look no further than Joe Biden that is pushing Build Back Better. Anyone? And you want to know the truth? <laughs> you know, most people fucking, uh, you know, voted this guy in because they hated Trump because they thought that he was going to do better. They knew nothing about this asshole. You know, but we knew who this asshole was. They want to put a microscopic tag into everyone. So does Bill Gates. So does the guy in the middle. They all do. They want everybody microchipped. The that voted for Joe Biden did not vote for a left or a Democratic or anything like that. They voted for a man that 100% in the open has sold us out to other people, rich people. And you'd have to be an idiot not to see it. Build Back Better, he's pushing a slogan made by these men. What, you don't care? It doesn't concern you at all? <laughs> go back to sleep then. That's the problem. Everyone wants to roll back over, go back to sleep. Well, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get these guys controlling everything. And there is a calling that has begun. You have the eugenist bill gates that's on camera talking about reducing the world's population by 15 percent through vaccines joining this group of people that want to track you prod you do everything that they can in, in the name of control now bill gates has the patented 666 vaccine that is yet to be rolled out that is going to be the big dog here when his second pandemic drops okay because they've done told us this isn't over there's going to be a second pandemic. There's also going to be a cyber attack. Klaus has said this specifically through his World Economic Forum. If you're paying attention, the writing's on the wall. The plan is out there to see for those that can see it. And they plan to have this whole thing wrapped up by 2030. And we've been telling you that for some time. So they've kicked things into motion. Here in 2020, they've shown the whole world there's something going on. People that didn't believe didn't think conspiratorial or think down the rabbit holes they've lost their job they yeah exactly <laughs> and that's just it you know uh, it's been an outsourcing you know small businesses are gone away with you know those that will implement uh, the new systems in there and totally do away with cash that's who's going to be left in power so you're not going to be able to buy a sell save you that has it you know so they're doing away with cash you know uh, they're restructuring buildings they are uh, taking out uh, tellers uh, Chase Bank has already taken out a teller and hey also Walmart is downsizing not the inventory but just how you get in it this is what's going on at uh, the local Walmarts uh, there's a sign up there that uh, pretty much uh, you know they're sorry for the inconvenience and then you see boards over on the other side there yeah what it, what's going on was there vandalism here did somebody uh, break the windows no of course not this is the most controlled uh, facility you know they got uh, 
you know, loud horns over like a prison yard, you know, telling you how you should practice social distancing. So no, nobody actually broke windows or anything, but uh, this is just it. You're not going to be able to get to the very front of the store. We apologize for the inconvenience. Please use the home and live living entrance. So you're only going to be able to get into the store one way. And it's happening everywhere, you know, but this is what's going on in my neck of the woods uh, already, you know, and it's just something I saw with my own eyes. Also, uh, Safeway took out their MoneyGram check cashing service. So you really, for check cashing services, which are starting to be done away with, yeah, you may only be able to go to Walmart or to uh, Winco for as long as they have those two, you see how everything's being downsized. It's being downsized because of the fact that they're going to be doing away with cash very shortly here. That's what's uh, the agenda. Well, maybe it has to do with this, you know. Um, Walmart to close temporarily for CV-19 cleaning. Hmm. You think it is? COVID-21? Because eventually that's what they're going to call it. The Walmart Supercenter will reopen at 7 p.m. Wednesday, January 6th, after being closed earlier this week because of CV-19 concerns. The announcement was made Monday by Casey Stala, a senior manager with Walmart's National Media Relations, a store located uh, off of Interstate 30. Well, okay, this is just a, a, a single Walmart, but nonetheless, though, you know, it will always say temporary clothes for this or for that, you know. So the two stories aren't related, but just the fact that uh, you're starting to see that it's getting harder to get in there. I remember when this whole coronavirus hoax started, you know, and uh, they had a yellow uh, line going across the shopping carts, you know, showing you that you had to go in only one way, you know. And then eventually that, uh, you know, gag order was pushed, you know, the mask mandate, you know, where you have to look like Charles Manson, you know, oh wait, Charles Manson didn't wear a mask, he didn't have to, but nonetheless though, you know, you, <laughs> it's like shit, you know, <laughs> dressing like the Lone Ranger and shit, you know, thinking that you're a bandit, you know, everybody looks like a bandit nowadays, but hey, while that's going on, uh, Christianity is at its end. More Hillsong pastors resign amid mega churches' ongoing scandal. Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny that our people still will go to this bullshit. But that's because they're in love with Esau. It's a cult. Ex uh, Hillsong members uh, claim church demanded slave labor. <laughs> yeah, because these are your slave owners. Yet another set of high profile pastors are leaving. Scandalized mega church Hillsong under unclear circumstances. Reed Bogard, 38, and his wife, Jess Bogard, 35. The lead pastors of the Australia-based institution Dallas's branch are stepping away from the once celebrity beloved International. Well, <laughs> I guess they won't be singing Mighty to Save for much longer, huh? Yeah, they're not going to save you from the nuclear destruction, you know, because only people that are going to be safe from that nuclear destruction are the Israelites. National Guard deployed to D.C. as capital braces for repeat of violence. So anyhow, you know, this is uh, because of the fact that uh, there's a lot of people that know that, hey, they did not vote for that other fucking dickhead. You know, that they voted uh, for Trump and uh, they're not very happy. Fearing a repeat of previous violence, officials have confirmed that the National Guard will be deploying hundreds of troops to the nation's capital this week as tens of thousands of Donald Trump supporters our far-right nationalists protect the congressional certification of Joe Biden's <laughs> and it wasn't a victory by the way uh, let's just say that uh, it was rigged just like Romney you know he Romney uh, we know really won but uh, you know <laughs> That's neither here nor there because, of course, uh, they wanted their puppet Biden in there, okay? Because Obama is Biden. They're the same people. Trump supporters warned not to bring guns to protests as Washington, D.C. mobilizes National Guard. The National Guard it 
was called up ahead of planned protest by President Donald Trump's supporters against a congressional certification of Joe Biden's uh, steal of the November election. City officials warned Trump supporters not to bring guns to protest this week and enlisted hundreds of National Guard courts to help keep security in order. So, again, you know, th there may actually be secessions. This might actually lead into a civil war. They've been talking about that for a while. Oh, and uh, hey, do as I say, not as I do. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. We can do it, but you can't. Arizona governor urged residents to stay home while his son posted maskless videos at crowded party. You know? So tonight I'm gonna party like it's 1999, but not for you. The maskless young man stands by a DJ booth, headphones around his neck, smiling and shaking hands as a packed crowd, also without masks, shimmers to the upbeat music. Come along and party up, baby. Fantastic slide, slide, slip to slide. Yeah, you know. Hey, they love Babylon. And yes, two thirds of our people are caught up in it. But you know what, though? I'm only speaking to the one third. Los Angeles mayor says virus spreading within households. Uh oh, I guess uh, they're going to use HR 6666. Well, they've been using it. So, you know, yeah, now they really are cracking down. The pandemic is getting worse in Los Angeles as the coronavirus hoax spreads rapidly within households in Fuckfornia. Let their guard down, according to Mayor Fuck Garcetti, who said Sunday that the nation's most populous country is recording a new record of CV-19 case every six seconds. Ooh, every six seconds. Yeah. Bunch of crap. Israeli state Saudi tempting U.S. into war with Iran. See, war is in the air. Trump's final days, commander, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, we're in the final days of uh, Trump. A senior Iranian commander says intelligence shows the Israeli state and... Saudi Arabia are trying to drag the United States into war with Iran in order to complete matters for the next administration in Washington. Brigadier General Hazaji, the deputy commander of the Quad Sports of the Iran's Islamic Revolution Guard Corps, made the remarks while addressing a ceremony in Tehran on Tuesday. Yeah, that's exactly what's happened. The official said that his warning about the incitement to war was based on mere analysis but it has been edified through actual intelligence that the Islamic Republic had received. The Zionist regime and countries such as Saudi Arabia are trying to bring about a crisis and tension during Trump's final days and achieve their goals thereby, he said. So again, you know, war being provoked and we might see some more skirmishes before Trump leaves. Iran says ready for defense if U.S. miscalculates deterrent power, you know, because they see that America as a fallen uh, place, you know, that it's deterring, you know, which, again, you know, we keep on reading over and over again that uh, Babylon the Great has fallen, has fallen. Iran has slammed the new psychological war waged by the ongoing United States administration against Tehran, warning that the country will strongly defend its international its interest in case of any miscalculations by the United Snakes in the region. Speaking at a press conference on Tuesday, the Iranian administration spokesman and Tehran has evidence that some in the U.S. are seeking to trigger a new conflict in West Asia. It is very unlikely that the U.S. administration will miscalculate Iran's resolute intentions as well as its deterrence and retaliation capability. We have made it clear to them that we will not start any war directly or indirectly, but if a blatant mistake is made by the United States, we will defend our security and vital interests with full force, Roddy added. So, they're ready. They're ready for this little bitch uh, to try to do something. Because that's all that America is, is a little bitch. You know, they have, they don't even fucking fight on the ground. They use their little fucking drones because they're such goddamn fucking cowards. Yeah, because they're going to get their ass kicked. They can't fight because they're a bunch of goddamn faggots. So a bunch of fucking queers that sit there at the fucking table playing with a joystick. 
That's the question. U.S. aggression against Iran could ignite global catastrophe. Yeah, we read about it all the time in Ezekiel's prophecy and in the rest of the prophecies that pretty much, though, Magog is a guard under them and uh, they start by going after Iran. And that's how the war really gets started. And at the same time, when Syria is compassed, all basically said, but I said earlier this morning on the Andrew Carrington Hitchcock show coming from London and that is the United States seems to be bent on starting a war with Iran chiefly for Zionist interests and secondarily for the perceived interests of Saudi Arabia and the Persian Gulf states. Yeah, because they want uh, the you know, the United States of the Middle East as well. You know, that's why they've been trying to conquer Syria. So they only have parts of Syria so they, you know, they could use Iraq and Saudi Arabia and all them places, you know, for the Greater Israel Project. This is a war that is not in the interest of the average American. It is a war that needs not take place. It is a war that threatens to absolute global if the Russians and the Chinese should become involved in some fashion as a result of the latest American provocation. Yeah, exactly. And that's, a, that's what does happen when you look into the prophecies. But wait, there's more. Remember Syria? U.S. occupation moved 60 Daesh terrorists from Hasakah prisons to its illegal base in Al Tam. Going to get them ready to strike uh, other places in Syria. You know, going to train them because that's what the U.S. military is so good for. Training terrorists to take over legitimate governments. The U.S. occupation forces moved scores of Daesh terrorists from several prisons in Hasakah Gumarate to their illegal base in El Tam on the Syrian-Jordanian border. Local sources toward Syrian Arab News Agency reported that the U.S. occupation forces transported 10 of Daesh terrorists detained in Camp al Bulgar, east of al Shaddai city, and 50 terrorists from the industrial secondary prison in Hasakah to the illegal U.S. base inside al Shaddai city through armored cars amid tightened security measures. The sources indicated that the terrorists were later transported from al Shaddai via a helicopter to the illegal U.S. base in the al Tamf area on the Syrian-Jordanian border. border. The U.S. occupation forces invest Daesh terrorists and take them out of their prisons in northern Syria to recruit them in operations to implement Washington's plot in the region. And don't forget the Zionist plot. So you see, that's the least of the flock drawing everybody into this war. And so here you have it, though. Uh, <laughs> What's Rapidly gonna happen? High housing prices might be fueling homeowners and real estate investors' hopes for brighter days in 2021. But experts are alerting that some dark clouds are ahead for the U.S. housing market. The unprecedented yeah, fuck you, realtors. prompted by the growing work from home professional landscape and the inability to travel, which have resonated in record high property sales and in a significant pricing bubble that's already being registered in several major cities across the nation. However, the unsuitable price increase could lead to a more dramatic decline when the housing market crashes. And when the bell videos, breaks, we're going to show you the the chart, how the U.S. housing market has entered the most splendid bubble in history. And when it bursts, it could make 2021 the most devastating year to buy homes in America. Yeah, to stay fuck with us, you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with friends, and subscribe Good to our channel. Good news for us, to keep bad news for you, Edomites. The next chapters of the economic collapse. According to the Case Schiller Home Price Index, nationwide, the prices of single-family houses climbed 8.4%. That's the biggest year-over-year -year increase since March 2014. The index is based on the sales pairs method, which compares the price of a property that was sold in the current month to the price of the same property when it was sold previously, going back decades. As compared to the National Association of Realtors House Price Index, which is as a function of median prices, prices jumped 15%. Amongst the main drivers for this considerable spike in prices 
is the reduced housing supply and the record high demand, as well as the extension of mortgage deferral periods. By contrast, related to all the previously mentioned, high unemployment rates may reverse both elevated prices and supply shortages. At this stage of the crisis, the bleak economic outlook for the forecasted 20 million out-of-work Americans might force unemployed owners to sell their homes, increasing supply and keeping demand for housing down. But one factor that has been keeping the market afloat is the record low interest rates since borrowing has never been so inexpensive, which of course gives you downsizing for housing by making mortgages more affordable. The Fed has been constantly handing trillions of dollars to the markets to keep rates down, ignoring the massive bubble the market has entered and the consequences of it on the debasement of the dollar's purchasing power. Moreover, the shift to working from home arrangements, the popular preference for homes over apartments or condo towers, as well as a dose of panic buying, have also contributed to keeping the housing market heated. As Wolf Richter reported in Wall Street, several major U.S. cities are registering skyrocketing prices, with Los Angeles having the most splendid housing bubble of them all. In L.A.'s metro area, House prices increased 1.1% from September to October and 8.4% year over year, which means prices are 14% higher than they were during the 2006-2007 bubble that resulted in the previous housing market crash of 2008. In January of 2000, the Case-Shiller Index was set at 100 across all 20 cities it covers. Now, the index value for Los Angeles is 312, meaning that house prices in the metropolitan area have more than tripled since January 2000. Yeah, Almost and it's just going to keep getting worse for you red Hebrew heathen mites, man. Graffiti with the phrases 2K, cancel rent and we want everything, covered Speaker Nancy Pelosi's garage door. On the sidewalk, a disturbing image to many neighbors who woke up to this, a pig's head and fake blood. I don't think that this is a useful way to go about it and it's a terrible start to this new year. The vandal's message alluding to failed efforts to provide Americans with a $2,000 stimulus check. Government should be doing all they can to give people assistance. Security cameras cover Nancy Pelosi's home. On the street, guards like Fred Kennerly with a private security company hired specifically to protect several residents in this affluent neighborhood. Is she one of the clients? No. <laughs> No, she has, she has her own security. It's still unclear if Nancy Pelosi was home at the time of the vandalism. But this guard says this is not the first time these attacks take place. Last time that where they hung all the, uh, uh, the dry, hair dryers and stuff in the tree or whatever. We contacted the San Francisco FBI office and they responded in part. In keeping with the DOJ policy, we cannot confirm or deny specific FBI activity or the existence of investigations. San Francisco police officers responded to a call of vandalism outside of Nancy Pelosi's home around 2 a.m. It's still unclear if any arrests have been made in this case. In San Francisco, Luz Peña, ABC7 News. So I got one more and then a testimony from another brother uh, who, uh, you know, is out there in Colorado teaching and, uh, you know, uh, was uh, praying for something uplifting and there it was, uh, the number 144. We all know what that number uh, means. The, <laughs> you know, we carry the sign with us, the 12 tribes, you know, and of each tribe, 12,000. So anyhow, uh, this is what's going on with the... Uh, Shit show of a recovery. No V-shaped recovery has happened yet, and it's not going to. As we're seeing that, of course, the housing market has crashed. Everything is crashing. Everything about Babylon is failing, and that's a good thing. So we're hastening to the coming of the day of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, and we pray that uh, Esau goes out like the bitch he's always been, and we're seeing it.
Native American proverb says, if we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. The Federal Reserve quietly announced on December 17, 2020 that it is redefining the M1 and M2 money supply measures by shifting the savings deposits component into M1 from M2. Nothing the Fed does happens by coincidence or merely on a whim. More likely, it was a move to hide the best measure of the money supply in preparation for the QE era. Many of us saw the banking system collapse unfolding well before 2006. As such, it's clear, at least to me, that the Fed knew it would be forced to start inflating the money supply ahead of the actual event. Thus, it's not a coincidence that the Fed's decision to obfuscate the movement of funds from M1 to M2 occurred after a parabolic shift of funds into M1 commenced. And a new pork-stuffed stimulus bill is passed, creating more debt and inflation. As the lawmakers in the House of Representatives passed a standalone bill that would raise the direct payment amounts distributed to American households under new COVID-19 relief legislation to $2,000, from $600, this is a recipe for inflation. M1 Money Supply Prices are already rising in soybeans, stock indices, crude oil, copper, Bitcoin and many more items. Money printing by the Fed means inflation in 2021 is baked into the cake. I don't have a problem with $2,000 checks to try and compensate for the forced lockdowns, it was our money to begin with, and they're simply giving some of it back to us. But the pork spending that shouldn't happen, even in the best of times, it's wasteful and a slap in the face to those paying the taxes. My very reasonable guess is that helicopter money will barely filter down to the hoi polloi and their riffraff businesses. The money will be spent by governments on their clients. States, municipalities, unions, universities, diversity this and that, cruise missiles, refill pension plans, art, high-end real estate, financial instruments, and, eventually crypto. Go long the Gini coefficient. Thinking this money is going into the economy is a faulty premise. The more checks they issue, the more pork-filled bills they can pass. We already have 200 trillion unfunded liabilities. 2.2 quadrillion in derivatives. What could possibly go wrong? But the Dow is at 30,000. Stock market at all-time highs and happy days are here again. Woohoo! Von Mises describes this as the crack-up boom. Oh, that's right. 84% of all stock market gains go to the top 10%. Fed policies that only benefit the already affluent are to blame for most of the misery. Government lockdown policies are to blame for the rest. They literally have blood on their hands. But hey, as long as Newsom can afford $310 a plate at the French <laughs> Laundry, who gives a damn? That's right. An economic and financial fundamental mismatch 107 years ass. in the making. Your face. Complete debt-based fiat Ponzi scheme for 49 years. 70 years of global war and nation building, not our own. An electorate so dumb as to not see this 100-foot-tall tidal wave coming for generations. Half the population on some form of psychotropic medication. Hundreds of millions of firearms. Racial, ethnic, class, linguistic, political and cultural divisions at almost unthinkable levels of incompatibility. A political class either oblivious to, or deliberately part of it all. And all permitted to go on unmentioned by the media, with a total blackout of any coverage, nor God forbid any education upon the true cause of this economic disaster particularly the people behind it for the past several centuries. Yeah, people have no freaking clue about the level of risk and the potentially disastrous scenario that is staring them in the face. And it's not just the US. The whole world, with its interconnected banking systems, when the dollar and the US go, it will take everyone down with it. We're staring at nothing less than the collapse of Western civilization. We are on the precipice of a new dark ages. Oh, and just to put a cherry on top, let's have a dozen nations with nukes. That yep. could add some firepower to the grand finale. That's what we're facing to the coming of day, how it must send me outside. To where it actually uh, does end with fireworks, with Babylon the Great being destroyed. That's right. Fuck Babylon. Fuck America. We can't wait to see it burn. This kingdom is being destroyed. Peace by peace. Shalom. First off, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahushai, Ba'ashim, Rakakadash, Yahweh being true name for the Holy Father, Yahweh Shai being named for his only begotten Son, of the world, eagerly calls God and Jesus Christ. 
on your double honors to the elders and the apostles, of great millstone, and taught the truth and move well. Decide to do hopefully like pushing this truth in all honesty and sincerity. This is the Yahweh Sat, because you know this is the spirit power you have about Shimei Shai. And this lesson is coming um, through you to the spirit, just some something I experienced today that was uh, very, you know, very uplifting in the spirit. You know, brothers uh, always talk about seeing signs and symbols and seeing that number 144 and seeing things happen, seeing, um, you know, 777 and seeing different things on the back, back of our license plates and, and so on and so forth. You know, a lot of these things uh, are the, the angels and the Heavenly Father speaking to us. You know, but um, just going into my testimony, what I've seen witness today, um, decided to go to uh, Pikes Peak in uh, Colorado. And um, it was my first time actually going there, driving up towards the top. You know, I might have been there as a kid. My parents might have took me, but uh, as far as what I can remember, this is my, this is my first time going. And uh, when I went there and drove up there, you know, um, it was, it was, man, breathtaking, to say the least, as far as the views and the magnificent the power and, and, and the art, artistry of the Heavenly Father, what he created, it, nothing, nothing can be compared, man. But, you know, going into, you have to actually go and um, you got to pay uh, a toll to get through. Uh, to, to drive up to the top and I couldn't go all the way to the top because there was a snow drift that had blocked it off so the snow because the snow drift happened it blocked it off at this at the, uh, the 13th mile marker you know I didn't really know what, what, what the lady was talking about because my first time driving up a mountain period but she said yeah you're not gonna be able to go past the 13 mile marker so I was like oh well what does that mean okay so then I understood when I start seeing the signs the signs you know every mile is numbered you know I'm not sure how many markers they have on, on that particular mountain but um, yeah the 13th one is the one that I had to stop at to turn around and go back down now I, it could have been any any of the markers the Lord could have set up a snow drift or whatever to block off the road to where you can only go so far but it stopped at this one now um, Something told me in the spirit to take a picture of the last, the last marker, you know, just as for memory's sake. And uh, the first time I passed it, I missed it. I didn't really think about it because I was just taken away by the views I was looking at. I was distracted. But on my way back down, I saw the sign again, and I decided to take a picture. Now, I was on the, on the move, so I wasn't even sure if I, if I caught the sign uh, clear enough. But apparently I did. Now, fast forward later on that day, you know, I get down the mountain, you know, I'm booed off of what I saw, and um, my father hits me up, and he said, you know, how far did you, how far up did you go? I was like, well, I only made it to 13, the 13 uh, mile marker, however however high that is. He's like, so you don't, you don't remember the elevation? I said, no, I don't, I don't remember the number, because I was just driving past the sign, and I can't, I can't remember. I completely forgot that I took a picture of it. And um, as I was eating dinner, um, I was just going through my pictures and I seen it so oh, I did take a picture of the sign there it is I was like I wonder how high up I went and I looked at it and I zoomed in and sure enough it says 1140 1000 uh, 11,440 feet okay 11,440 feet and that number that sandwiched in between the one and the zero is one four four okay so that was the first thing that blew me away I was like no man ain't no way I seen that I've been seeing 144 all day and then I also rec recollected that when I began my descent and started going down from the peak as I was uh, looking at the scenery I remember glancing at the clock just to see how what time it was because I was trying to rush down and try to see if I could get some fishing in winter fishing and uh, I glanced at the clock. The clock said 444. Then I seen the sign says 144 in it. And then what really took me away is of all the signs that this number was posted on, if you look at what's here, the animal is the big horn sheep. 
So, man, hey, I, I couldn't help but to just give all praise to how about Chanel Shy, man. I was really glorifying him in that moment. That was really uplifting, you know. And when you're when you're down in the spirit, the Lord can find ways. And, and, and when he comes through for you and to lift you up in the spirit and give you that boost, hey, he's going to give it to you and then some. You know, this whole trip has been beautiful, man. But going into what this means, man, these, what are these signs and the symbols? Well, the Lord deals with signs. He even deals, you can find, even find the 12 tribe sign in the scriptures. When it says that they can, uh, they're going to put their names on a, on a piece of, a piece of wood or a tree, roughly paraphrasing, making signs and showing people, man. So this was a heavy spiritual sign. Now, I don't, I don't know if I'm of the hopeful elect. I dare not call myself of that number, but, you know, I pray that I am of the hopeful. I'm hopeful that I am. I hope I am. You know? I mean, who, would, who wouldn't want to be? But seeing things like this, man, it gets better. As I'm recollecting, recollecting on what I saw, and it all comes to, comes to mind, uh, what just took place as far as the sign of the symbol with the sheep sign the 11,440 the 144 in that number seeing the time stamp on, on, the, on my descent at, at uh, 4.44 p.m. in the midst of telling the brothers my testimony what I just experienced this is the check number that I got for my my tab for my dinner look at the check number man 144 man call all your how about shimmy i was shy so let's get into it man because that's beautiful this is revelation 7 and 4 so what is, what is what's the big deal about 144 it says and i heard the number of them which were sealed and there were sealed at hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of israel the hundred and forty four thousand are the future kings to be crowned physically by himself by Yahweh Shai to rule the, to help rule the kingdom of heaven. Yahweh Shai is going to rule over all. His father rules over the entire universe and over all. But the one that's going to be ruling and reigning, giving orders, executing the laws and judgments with Yahweh Shai is 144,000 men that are prophets in the kingdom of heaven. So this is what the big deal about the number 144 is. And some people always want to throw around that number and try to say, hey, I'm on the 144 too, because, you know, they, everybody wants to be a part of that number, but only few can be, be a part of it. First of all, you, got, you need to be a, a man of the Lord, a man, a prophet. Women have election too. You can be a wife of the hopeful elect. That means you're of the one-third of the chosen. You're still cho just as chosen too. You're labeled a title of a, of a one-third of the nation of Israel. You're the hopeful elect of the women. You have a hopeful elect of the men that's going to be kings and rulers. And then you have the hopeful elect of the women. They're going to be the wives of those men and governing the households over the rest of the women. So that's beautiful, man. Signs and symbols, man. Going to the sheep. Back into that sign. Okay, what does it say on there? Big horn sheep. Mile marker 13. Which 13, I believe, is a um, another number of, of completion or power. There's another uh, spiritual meaning behind that number 13. I can't remember. If then you remember what it, what it means, you can leave it on the um, comment board. But it says the sheep is on there. The big sheep. It didn't, it didn't just say sheep. It said big horn sheep. <laughs> Yahweh Shai himself referenced as the lamb of Israel that gave himself a sacrifice a lamb because another word for lamb is sheep or a ram is a, is a male version of a sheep or a lamb John 10 and 27 my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me so the Lord's sheep hears, hears him follow him you know, and me through the Spirit, I've been following him for years now. And I haven't, I haven't stopped. Still prophesying. I'm, I'm prophesying as I'm speaking. I'm making this lesson right now. It says, and I know them, and they follow me. You know, we're the, ch 
chances of me being a follower of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, a prophet, and I come across the last sign at, the, at Pike's Peak, at the mountaintop, close to the heavens, I come across that sign that has a big sheep on it, and it has a number 144 on the sign. Man, call all Yahweh Bashim Yahshai is all I got to say, man. 2 Corinthians 10 and 12 For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise so this isn't about comparing me to anybody else as being who's who's more uh, righteous and who's who's not who's more chosen and who isn't that's not what it's about and I dare not make myself that number you know this could just be uh, a sign for something else spiritually that the hopeful elect, it should be a sign that the hopeful elect is sealed. And the Lord's on his way back. And in the midst of judgment, we're getting ready to see great deliverance. That could be what it was for. It might not necessarily mean that I am a hopeful elect, a hopeful chosen. Now, I really hope I am. Now, granted, the hopeful elect are going to be men that are actually physically out there prophesying and teaching, which I am doing. But that's one indication of who the hopeful elect is. Are they prophets or not? And are they following the right doctrine? Are they teaching for filthy lucre sake? Are they teaching for likes and attention and women? Or are they teaching for the Lord and for truth? For truth's sake. It says, For we dare not make ourselves of that number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. It's not wise to compare yourself with another person. You know, who has a better, more stronger spirit. That's, that's, that's wicked. 1 Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So this is why every time I see that number 144, I stop what I'm doing, I give all praise, honor, and glory to you, how about Shemel Shai? I always say, call all you, how about Shemel Shai? Every single time I see that number, man. And speaking of which, it just happened right now. Call all y'all about Shemiah Shai. The time over here in Colorado is 1044. Call all y'all about Shemiah Shai. You see how that works, man? I didn't plan this lesson out for that to happen either. If you want to believe it or not, I don't, I don't care. This is uh, John 15 and 16. It says, Ye have not chosen me, but have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name he may give it to you so the Lord chose us we don't choose ourselves and make ourselves one day it's no such thing you can just call up wake up one day I'm the hopeful elect and you, it's on your own accord to just be a prophet no man the Lord chooses you he forces your life a life changing and changing of this to push you into becoming a prophet that you were already handpicked and selected for. You know? But we're supposed to be bringing fruit. If you're a prophet, you're out there doing shows at the highways and hedges, that's bringing fruit. That's bringing people into repentance. You know, I, I had people all the way in other states, man, hitting the comment boards and saying, you know, you know, one brother, he was, I think he was in, he's in Detroit, and he said, hey, look, I'm going out teaching now. So call out your by Shemiel Shah. That's a prime example, man. I didn't have to be in that state for that to take place. I just did, did what I was supposed to do, did the works. Teaching these shows, man. It makes an impact on people's lives more than what you think it, it does. Revelation 11, 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of life from Yahweh, entered into them. And they stood upon their feet in great fear fell upon them which saw them and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them so we're getting close to a time where the Lord said uh, I mean that he's coming back pretty soon through prophecies man you know and it's the spirit that the, the uh, New Year's slogan that Apostle Tahar came out with said that you know, it's just 
the year of hasting, hasting the Lord's coming. So hasting or hoping that the Lord comes quick, praying that he comes fast. So hey, the election is, is taking place or has taken place already. It's Ezekiel 37, 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. That's that 144,000, man. Prophesy. Prophesy. The army is the ones that prophesy. So those brothers that are prophesying are those ones that are of that army, not the ones out there two-stepping and, you know, through a fraternity, stepping and stomping with purple garments and robes saying, look at me, I'm an Israelite. That's, that's not prophesied. That's not prophesying. They declared themselves as being an exceeding great army, but them dudes ain't it, man. And you know who I'm talking about. You know? So, hey, signs and symbols like these, man, hey, if you're, if you're down in spirit, pray to about you, I'll try to uplift you. Now, I've been praying for uplifting, you know, for the past couple weeks now. The Lord gave me exactly that, man. That was beautiful, man. That made my entire month. I probably made my entire rest of the year everything that I, I just witnessed. And Lord's will, how about Shimei Shai comes back this way? I hope, I hope he does, man. I hope, I'm ready for the kingdom. You know, Esau's coming down with great wrath. All signs are pointing towards a big time great deliverance. You know, so with that, I'm going to close out give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh by Shimei Shai by Shimei Kakadash. Double honesty, those the apostles, great millstone, time to shoot them real well. And scientists, you hopefully that person is true and all honesty and necessary. Shalom. And then I got one more here by Elder Sakan. So I hope all these videos have been edifying like everything else, though. We're going to keep on hastening to the coming of the day of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahushai. Shalom, rock a thumb to your helpful elect. Good evening. A group of 11 current and incoming Republican senators today announced plans to reject electoral college results in certain states won by President-elect Joe Biden. This despite no credible evidence of widespread fraud in the election. Lawsuits claiming the election was stolen have been consistently rejected by the courts, including the U.S. Supreme Court, twice. The last stand is set for Wednesday, when Congress meets to certify Mr. Biden's victory. Weijia Jiang is at the White House and leads us off tonight. Senator Ted Cruz is leading an effort to challenge President-elect Joe Biden's victory. Cruz is among 11 Republican senators who announced today they will object to the certification of the election results unless a 10-day emergency audit is completed by an electoral commission to look at election returns in disputed states. We knew that there needed to be something that was done. Earlier this week, Missouri Senator Josh Hawley said he plans to contest the outcome too. Four of the lawmakers were just elected on the same ballot as President Trump, but they are not questioning the legitimacy of their victories. The Biden team said in a statement, this stunt won't change the fact that President-elect Biden will be sworn in on January 20th. The move is more symbolic than practical. A majority in both the House and Senate would have to vote to overturn the will of the voters. Democrats control the House. These are political arsonists at this point in time. They are undermining the integrity of our democracy. The Trump campaign has lost dozens of court challenges to the election, and the Justice Department said there is no evidence of widespread voter fraud. Late last night, a federal judge dismissed a lawsuit filed by Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert, who falsely claimed Vice President Mike Pence has the power to decide the winner of the election. Today in Georgia, Cruz did not mention his effort as he campaigned for two GOP colleagues fighting to keep their seats in runoff races on Tuesday. The forces that are seeking to tear this country down have set their targets on the state of Georgia. High profile members of both parties are crisscrossing the state. The results will determine control of the U.S. Senate.
Last night, President Trump falsely claimed that the special elections are invalid and illegal, but this morning he urged people to vote in them. While promoting a rally he plans to hold in Dalton, Georgia on Monday. Adriana? All right. Shalom. To Wap Yawam, first and foremost, as always, all praise, honor, and glory goes unto Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shah. Also, want to give double honors to the elders of Great Millstone and honors to all you fellow laborers that are kicking this word in sincerity and in faith. The Wadi Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Kaya Harakakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit resting upon me to do this lesson. Now, this is another volume of Sunrise Spiritual Speaking, the 152nd volume, and the subtitle is The Collapse of Babylon is Upon Us because. Babylon, which is the biblical name, daughter of Babylon, uh, spiritual Sodom in Egypt, Nineveh. This is the uh, this is the end of this place. These are the names. These are the biblical names for America. The main name being uh, Babylon or the daughter of Babylon, which means what? Land of confusion. And this place is crumbling. Now Wednesday they're supposed to have a big rally because that's supposed to be the certification as the video is going into of the new uh, the new president. Which he's now known as president-elect until he gets officially inaugurated on the 20th of uh, Jim Crow Joe Biden. But you see, there's what? There's pushback from that. You know, they're not going out without a fight. And what's going on in Georgia in the uh, political stage is, uh, is a big thing as well. You have two Senate seats which are up. You got the one Judite and then you got the, uh, the Edomite. And they're running against two quote-unquote conservative Edomites. Hey, so hey, there's a lot of stuff going on. Now there was a uh, there's a detonation I believe it was in Pittsburgh that took place yesterday, and the, the there was a water break and the earth opened up over there in Cincinnati Ohio. So there's a lot of things going on. The Heavenly Father he's continually uh, handing out judgments upon this earth. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and start there in the book of Zephaniah. So that's why we're commanded to be circumspect and we have to always be upon our watch. This book of Zephaniah three verse five. The just, the just Lord Yahweh is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. That's right, because there's certain things that the Heavenly Father does. You know, people say, damn, that's fucked up. But really, he doesn't do iniquity. Well, everything he does is right and just because he's the Most High. Whatever he, whatever he says goes. Every morning do if he bring his judgment to light. He faileth not, right? So he doesn't fail continually. Uh, handing out judgment but the unjust know of no shame that's right if you're unjust you're not going to know any shame because that means you're what you're you're an evildoer you're wicked you're reprobate you're not going to turn from your ways psalms 9 verse 16 the lord how is known by the judgment which he executed right so the heavenly father he's known by his judgments and he's handing out heavy judgments upon his earth just in the third what is it the third or the fourth it's the fourth now of uh of 2021 already gruesome judgments particularly upon you women i've been seeing a lot of judgments upon you women just getting shot shot dead at three in the morning especially in new york there's one lady i think she was a, uh she was from the northern kingdom she was found in a trash chute so that's the judgment of the heavenly father every weekend there's been social upheaval there's been uproars there was a big uproar in salem oregon which that's the capital of oregon not too far about 45 minutes to an hour from from Portland which is the big city out there and they're get they're getting turned up and this is only going to increase the Lord how was known by the judgment which he executed the wicked is snared in the work of his own hands Higayan Selah that's right man so the wicked are snared in the work of their own hands and the wicked they're crumbling and the wicked they're divided in their own counsel let me go ahead and grab that is casting them down this is the book of Job chapter 18 verse 5 yay the light of the wicked shall be put out and the spark of his fire shall not shine right and that's what 2021 is further highlighting how you so-called white people who are biblically known as the Edomites the descendants of Esau, the descendants of Esau you're going down and you you don't have too much fight left in you I was in old sack for the last three days and there's a lot of demonic activity somebody actually got shot so I was bringing it out on Saturday and I stopped around 415 430 around there got up out of there within the next 15 minutes and somebody got shot like 30 minutes after I left right across the street from where I was at so that's what that's judgment of the Heavenly Father and I believe it was the Edomite I hope it was that Edomite that was messing around with me 
And that's why you Edomites are so incensed because you understand that your light is being put out. And the spark of his fire shall not shine. You no longer have the shine. Now you Edomites, you've had the shine for the past 500 plus years. But now you're in a precipitous decline right along with Babylon the Great. Which you're in charge of. In particular you elites and that's pursuant to the book of Psalms 137 verses 7 through 9. Babylon is equated with Edom, and that's clear throughout the scriptures. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. Right, your understanding is lacking. That's why we bringing out the word, and you Edomites, you throwing up the white flag. You coming up, you, you trying to give, give food, give money. And the scriptures say that his children shall seek to please the poor. <laughs> and that's the time that we're in. The steps of his strength shall be straightened. Right, you're in uh, dire straits, as the old saying goes. Which is what hard times, a difficult time. The steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. You see that? So this is Esau's counsel. This whole government structure. All right, you so-called black and indigenous peoples, you had no part in the formation of America, other than you being uh, being uh, worked to death or having your land taken. But as far as the government structure, that goes back to Esau. You had you had the uh, Constitutional Congress and I believe that's that's the name because before you had because you had one government I think it was the Constitutional Congress something like that let me look it up real quick it's gonna bother me if I don't yeah you know you had the Constitutional Convention because there was something that that was set up before it should yeah, you had the Continental Army Yeah, the articles, the Second Continental Congress. Yeah, it was something else. It was something else, and then you have you you had the democracy, the representative, the representative democracy, which America goes by now. So you have the Declaration of Independence, then you have the Constitution, and then you have these different these different colonies, which then became states, and then there was the Western expansion. Of Ohio Territory, then Louisiana Purchase, and all the way out here to the West Coast where I'm at currently. So who put that together? Esau put that together. Now there were certain Israelites here and there, but really it was it was Esau. So your own counsel, let me read that again, the steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. That's right, because these devils, they're imploding. Now, true enough, there is an element, a, hard, a large element of a WWE spirit meaning you know on the on the outside on the outside their uh their opponents their adversaries but behind closed doors you know they're all eating and drinking together which that's true yet there are genuine dissensions all right amongst these uh, elites and the lesser luminaries and that's being highlighted all right let me go ahead and play this as well and up here This is just grossly irresponsible uh, by Senator Hawley. million Americans who feel disenfranchised, who feel like their vote doesn't matter, and this is the one opportunity that I have as a United States Senator. This process right here, my one opportunity to stand up and say something, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I 
I can tell you Senate Republicans did not want to have this vote in the Senate because either they're going to have to, you know, show their loyalty by Donald Trump by voting against reality because we know that Joe Biden won these states, uh, or they're going to have to, you know, support the outcome of the democratic process um, and get Donald Trump uh, upset. This is my opportunity to stand up and say something, to stand up and point out that there were irregularities in this election, that there was fraud. Nobody disputes that, by the way. Yeah, so Trump, he ain't going out without a fight. <laughs> hey, which it's clear that there was there was voter fraud. Clear. Because you see the energy surrounding Trump and you see the energy surrounding Jim Crow Joe. There's way more energy with Trump. You see them rallies, so it just makes sense. And then there's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of information going back to the voting, the voting machines and those are used in Venezuela as well. There's a, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother can of worms, so to speak. You know, so you have you have uh, Donald Trump and then his supporters. They're supposed to go out in mass on January 6th. They're supposed to converge on D.C. You know, not too long ago they had the million MAGA march. So this place isn't going to go back to normal. And it's not. It's not that. It's not as if these Trump supporters are just going to go back in into the uh, shadows all right th this uh this is only going to escalate the dc hotels are canceling reservations and restaurants are being forced to close i'm bringing a carload of food and three tents to dc on january 6th to share with my maga fam it will be the tailgate of our lifetimes so it's a lot of people man patriots coming in from all over the country january 6th prep because this is what's trending right now It has begun. Contested election. Yeah, and the main guy who's leading the charge is Ted Cruz, which that's some Spaniard from uh, originally from Cuba. His, his his forefathers go back to Cuba and before that Spain. He's some some Edomite Latino. He's the main one that's standing up. If true, he is about to be devoured by two million piranhas on January sixth. So there's a lot going on. So let me read a little bit of this. Up to a million Americans will descend on Washington this Wednesday when Congress moves to formalize November's election. If, if misrepresented by the media, the event could be the spark for the mother of all national breakups. Because what does this say? Will January 6th be the date the second U.S. Civil War begins? And that's that's how it looks. At a time in U.S. and I'm gonna just jump around as always, because this is a opinion piece, so it goes into a lot of stuff that isn't really pertinent. At a time in U.S. history when the political stage looks time to blow, it was incumbent upon U.S. media to provide the most impartial account of the presidential contest between Trump and Biden as humanely, I'm sorry, as humanly possible. But apparently that was asking too much of the fourth estate, which leans so hard left it threatens to tip over the entire republic. Do, 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 do. Currently, hundreds of thousands of Americans from every walk of life are descending on Washington, D.C. for what may go down in the history books as one of those pivotal watershed moments that changed the course of the country forever. Amid numerous accusations of fraud and irregularities in the November presidential election, an increasing number of Republicans including Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley, just I heard from, and Marsha Blackburn, have said they will not, in the absence of an emergency investigation, certify the electoral college votes in favor of Democrat Joe Biden, Jim Crow Joe. So this is big. 
This is this is real big. I'm going to just jump down. In short, it would be difficult to imagine a more dangerous situation than that now confronting America. That's right, man. It's, very, it's a very dangerous time to be in Babylon the Great. What does scripture say? Let me uh, go ahead and bring this up in 2 Timothy, the third chapter. 2 Timothy 3 and 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now this word perilous, chalepos, hard to pair, troublesome, dangerous, right? We're in very dangerous times, very dangerous, tumultuous times. In short, it would be difficult to imagine a more dangerous situation than that, than that now confronting America. That's right. So simultaneously as allegedly there's over 200,000 COVID cases a day, which those are record highs. The last couple of days have been record highs. Remember, remember about a month and a half ago, month and a half, two months ago, it was a watershed moment in that there was a hundred thousand cases. Now it was two hundred thousand. Allegedly, the death the death count is over three hundred and fifty thousand. I say allegedly because we know there's a number of irregularities. There's been a lot of information about how you die from a car crash and it's marked as a COVID nineteen fatality. You know, that's the media narrative that is over three hundred and fifty thousand deaths and there's two hundred thousand infections each day. So while this is going on, you have estimated a million to two million people that are going to descend on Washington DC in two days to continue to protest what they view as voter fraud so that's what that's that's the Egyptians against the Egyptians it's the book of Isaiah chapter 19 verse 2 and I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians now pursuant to the book of Revelation 11 and 8 this place is spiritually Sodom and Egypt why Sodom because of the rampant sexual immorality which was present in Sodom and Gomorrah in those three neighboring cities is present here I mean these these uh, so-called homosexuals and lesbians they're coming out of the woodworks every day a pedophile is getting exposed people sleeping with animals well the term is pansexual which that means all now before women and men they would classify themselves as bisexual so pan, what is there other than a man and a woman? There's animals, there's all robots, people people be marrying sex robots. This place is sick. And Egypt is known as what? The place of the captivity of Israel. Which all 12 tribes are in captivity here in Babylon the Great, also known as Egypt again, here in 2021. So the scriptures say, I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. And they shall fight everyone against his brother. And everyone against his neighbor city against city and kingdom against kingdom right and and that's what's going on so let me go back to this article in short it would be difficult to imagine a more dangerous situation than that now confronting america while media personalities certainly have the right to hate donald trump their main duties is to that of the american people in the u.s electoral process once americans lose faith in the voting process as they already have with the media process, it is game over for the U.S. And that's that's the spirit of these Babylonians. A lot of people didn't even vote. A lot of people didn't vote. Why? Because they understand that this is all BS. And those of our people, especially you so-called African Americans and you other uh, you other tribes, but particularly Judah, those of you that voted for Jim Crow, Jim Crow Joe, when you was cursing cursing your family members out, you was uh, cursing your your loved ones out because they didn't vote now you're reconsidering because what did he do he cursed out all those top civil rights leaders you know talk to talk to them like they was a red-headed stepchild so that further alienates people from this system which is going to lead to what more sedition among men which 2021 is going to be right for that man it is game over for the U.S. It will be considered no better than the, the banana republics it chastises on a regular basis. Right. And that's what America, as I've been saying, as other brothers have been saying, America is turning into a third world country. And I say a fourth world country because America is going to be worse than any other country on the earth. It's the book of Mark, chapter 3. Let me see. There 
go Satan. All right, that's all right. It's Mark chapter three, verse twenty-four. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Right. So this place is clearly divided against itself. That kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself. That house cannot stand, right? The house of Esau can't stand because they're divided against themselves. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but have an end. That's right, man. So the spiritual demon Satan and his children are divided. Well, I should say the spiritual demon Satan's children, they're divided. And so they cannot stand. And, and that's why all these things are taking place. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end there. As always, all praise, honor, and glory goes unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Adoran Ratazada lesson was edifying. And until next time, Shalom.